So how many of you throughout this whole entire pandemic has downright felt shameful and inadequate in regards to your finances? Well, I will share with you in this episode one biblical principle that if you incorporate this on a daily basis, it will guide you towards becoming a faith-based millionaire in 2022. What is it? Let's get started in this episode of Vlogmas, episode five of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Was fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And if you haven't done so already, please click subscribe below because our goal is to get to 150,000 subscribers, so therefore we can award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of you, yes, the squad, to help them help other people. So please click subscribe. All right, let's get right into it. Have you ever heard of this saying? Life gives to the givers, takes from the takers, and has a very accurate accounting system. When I first heard this, I was blown away by this parable, by this quote because it caused in me a shift in my attitude towards money. It caused in me a shift in my perspective about money and also caused me a direction and excitement when I finally make my money. Because when I heard this, I was absolutely flat broke. I'm gonna share with you stories in the Bible that might encourage you, and I hope that it deeply encourages you to incorporate this daily habit into your lives. It was so impactful that there's many, many different scriptures of Jesus talking about the habit of giving. That's correct. The daily habit of giving. And what does it mean to give? I mean, after all, it is Christmas. It is the holiday season, is it not? I mean, this is the holiday season of giving. I want you to know that these stories are effectively in the Bible. And if you look in the book of Luke, there's many different stories about givers. I just decided to take three of them from the book of Luke, of Luke documenting his association and discipleship with Jesus. Okay, three types of givers in the book of Luke. First one, is the fake giver, the fake giver. Yep, he's fake, looks good, sounds good, but deep down inside, paper thin and flat out fake. So in this scripture of Luke 18, chapter 22 and 23, this is the story of the rich ruler. And this rich ruler, he absolutely coveted his wealth. And at the same time too, he's also curious about Jesus. He's curious about his faith. He's curious about his relationship with God. Also, he's curious about his relationship with money. So Jesus actually caused him to rethink the way he thought about money. Because money, according to the scripture, money will expose and magnify your character. Money will expose your deep down beliefs. So let's take a look at this scripture, what he says here, what Jesus says here, about what his command was to the rich ruler as it was towards money. Let's take a look at this. A certain ruler asked him, good teacher, which is Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, why do you call me good? No one is good except God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not get murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. And this ruler says, all these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. And then Jesus heard this. He said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have. And give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. He became very sad because he was a great man of wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Verily I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Who then can be saved? Man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, by the way, this is the favorite scripture, not only to help you become a better giver, but also this is the favorite scripture of my favorite community out there that loves to be judgmental Christians saying, hey, it's a sin to be rich. Hey, it's a sin to make money. It's, it's better to be more blessed, to be broke and living in poverty in America because it's easier for a, camel go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. By the way, let's take a look at a recent interview I did with this entrepreneur who was a felon and what his revelation was in prison 
of what God told him about money. Let's take a look at what Ryan Stuman said about this scripture. Let's take a look at this. What does it take to be a person of faith, to be faith-based, and actually not feel any guilt of succeeding? Because, you know, you see it around the faith-based community, the Christian community. Oh, you know, you know, it's better to be broke, man. I mean, you know, God doesn't want you to prosper and, and some financial myths that people have about finances in the church. Well... <laughs> I think a lot of people are very undereducated when it comes to the Bible. And I think it's because we got a lot of people with hidden agendas preaching stuff from it that they're really not sure about. Um, I spent a lot of time in prison and spent a lot of time in solitary confinement. Therefore, I have read the Bible. Bible. <laughs> a couple times. Yes. Times, yes. Yeah, four times to be exact. Wow. And since 2005, I have read the proverb of the day damn near every day, which would mean that I have read Proverbs over 200 times, I believe. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. I love Proverbs. I mean, we, we did a series, of, that was a video for us that blew up, uh, how this book of the Bible made me millions. And yep. I got so much heat from the faith-based yep. community. Oh, you should never use the Bible to make money. God didn't save it. They misunderstand the word humble. Have, most people have never looked up the definition of humble. That's where people don't understand. The Lord tells you to be humble, or the, the Lord doesn't say that. The Bible, the man writing in the Bible, says that, that, that that's God's will is for you to be humble, but it doesn't say be broke. Correct. It also Correct. does. It says, well, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of, of a needle. needle that, however, what people don't understand is the eye of the needle is not what we sew with. You think people were sewing with needles back then with eyes in them? How, they didn't have machinery. How could they have made something that small, right? Most names come from something else, right? The eye of the needle was where you rode your camel through the crossing of a castle to go into a new town. Remember back in the day, oh, Jerusalem, yeah, fortified. Yeah. The okay. eye of the needle is the saying that you wrote because it was threaded your camel through there, which is actually where the eye of the needle actually comes from, which meant that it's not in impossible it's just a pain in the ass <laughs> boom and people right. don't understand that so they use these sayings not understanding the context google me i'm not wrong and and pastors say this too because they've never heard the real story of it and they don't understand this because whoever mentored them told them but listen if i ran a church do i want a broke congregation no we ain't gonna build no beautiful building for god with a broke congregation sure. i need my congregation on fire making yeah. money yes you know it doesn't make sense you think when god created us he's like you know what I want this person that, you know what? I created this in my image and I want my image to grow up and be fat and broke and make a bunch of excuses and be useless. That's the image I created oh, man in. Oh, drop it. Hell no. <laughs> hell, <laughs> hell no. Huh? So what do you think? Put your thoughts in the comments section below. And so when you're looking at this, this rich ruler, it was exposed that he and his faith and his belief is paper thin. Here's superficial and religious. What do you think, Jordan? You think so too? <laughs> by, the way, by the way, everybody, this is Jordan. Say hi, Jordan. Yeah, uh-huh. I love you. So what Jesus revealed to him, that he's a faker, that he's not a giver, because he was so covetous of his material wealth, his possessions, the kingdom. Do you think a massive story would be magnified through Jesus, through this, rich young ruler if he actually didn't get bluffed about his faith imagine if he actually followed through check that out so if you are in the belief saying you know what matt i totally get it i want to improve my habits when it comes to this belief system put it in the comment section below i am a giver i am a giver all right let's look into the second story it's the story of the good samaritan see the good samaritan had a busy day the Good Samaritan had a family. The Good Samaritan has a business. The Good Samaritan was going from point A to point B, most likely expanding his territory, expanding his business, expanding his opportunity. But he noticed that this person was robbed by burglars and robbers. The person was stripped down naked, beaten in the street. And what did this Good Samaritan do? He said, you know what? You need help. I'll put you on my donkey. Let me transport you to the inn. And he told the innkeeper, listen, man, I need to make sure this guy is taken care of. Give him the best medical care. I'm going to come here and pay you what I owe him for him staying in your hotel. In addition to that, find him some medical care and whatever doctors and nurses and, and medical supplies needed to help him heal up again from being beat down and robbed. Charge me. Put it on my bill. Put it on my tab. Put it, charge it to the room. Let's take a look at what Scripture says about the Good Samaritan here in Luke chapter 10. It reads like this. The next day, this Good Samaritan took out two silver coins 
and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you might have. Now think about this real quick. What did this good Samaritan do? Not only did he help somebody who was robbed, who was beaten, who was broken down, okay? But he also helped the innkeeper, who's an entrepreneur. He helped the business person. He helped the local community there who was engaging in this person's care. See, many of you think that when I make money, then I'm gonna be a bigger giver. Nope, that's not the case. You start with the little things. You start with the small things you can do that doesn't cost you a lot of money because all money will do will just simply magnify your attitude, your character, your beliefs and behaviors. That's all money will do. Let's talk about the third story here about the transformed giver. And this story is about a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Nobody liked him. Back in the day, a tax collector was the sinful and he was stealing and robbing from everybody and everybody knew it. Okay. Because back then, here's he what happened. The, the people of Israel, the Hebrews, the Israelites, would be ruled by the Romans, okay? And the Romans would collect taxes from everybody, especially, especially God's people. He's taking taxes from people. And they knew this tax collector was skimming on folks. They were just skimming on them. They were just taking money and putting it in their own pocket. So in this scripture story, in this parable story, Zacchaeus was interested in Jesus. It's like, listen, this guy's healing people. This guy's creating miracles. This guy's starting to change. My, I'm listening. This guy's changing my life. I'm so curious what this guy has to say. So what does he do? And it's, you know, Jesus comes into town. Everybody starts getting in a circle. What does he do? He's, he's a short guy. He can't see. So he climbs up on a tree and just checking out the conversation. And Jesus says, hey, Zacchaeus, what's up? By the way, I'm paraphrasing. Zacchaeus, I'm hanging out with you tonight. I'm going to your house. And then everybody who is believers, and wait a minute, I'm a little bit more worthy than this guy, Zacchaeus. He's a sinner. Hmm, kind of tells you about the character of Jesus. Because Jesus is still a giver. He's shedding mercy upon this guy. Anyway, make a long story short, this guy, Zacchaeus, feels convicted. He's like, oh my gosh, this guy wants to have dinner in my house? The son of man wants to come to my house. I get it. I feel convicted. I've been ripping people off. So make a long story short, he sold off all his things, gave 50% of what he owned to the poor and whoever he stole money from. I will give half of my belongings to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I will pay him back four times as much. <laughs> then Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. You see, that's what Jesus wants to do with your finances. That's what God wants to do with your life. He wants to magnify your story. And some of you said, well, Matt, you're talking about guys that are making money. Listen, regardless if you're making money or not, forget people's financial status for a second. Because here's, here's the thing. Giving is both important, not only when you're rich, but more so when you're broke and poor. And I've always said this. Broke is a temporary condition. Because if you have wealth principles, wealth values, well, scriptures that you're equipped with and armed with, guess what? That broke temporary situation will be compressed. It'll be compressed to shorter time than necessary. Because here's the thing. If you allow yourself to be broke, and you start accepting that you're broke. You're actually telling God, okay, God, uh, I don't really trust you. I don't really understand your graces and your goodness in my life. I know you own everything, but yet you want me to be broke. You're not trusting the Lord. You're not increasing your skill set. You're not expanding your territory. You're not expanding your vision. You're not allowing the God-given dream that God gave you and only you to be magnified through your finances, to be magnified through your talents, to be magnified through your, 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 your business, your career. You're actually saying, God, I don't trust you because you know what? I'm just going to settle here to be broke. And I tell this to the judgmental Christian community all the time. Don't be so heavenly minded when it comes to scripture. Don't be so heavenly minded and verbatim factoids about scripture. Don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. This is a moment where fear sharpens listening. This is a moment where you allow pain to become a great teacher. This is a moment where you allow in your brokenness, in times where you're in a mix of, I don't know what to do next. I don't know how to plan for 2022. I don't know how to plan for my next year. This is the time where God is speaking to you. And perhaps maybe this video is speaking to you too as well. So the question for you is, if you don't learn how to be a giver, a saver, an investor, right? Somebody that contributes to society. When you're broke, guess what happens? You start becoming poor. Because even though 
God freely gives. It's up to us people to freely accept, learn, and implement. The question for you is, what are you going to do with this? You know, scripture says this, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your power, all your strength, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you're not loving yourself, then you're not loving your neighbor. If you aren't taking care of you, how can you be taking care of your neighbor? If you ain't taking care of your household, how could you be taking care of the community? And I believe 2022 is going to be the rise of the faith-based millionaires. Not because they want to be millionaires, not because they want to be deca millionaires, not because they want to be billionaires. See, I believe that 2022, God wants to use you in a mighty in a powerful way. I believe God wants to use you to financially bless you so therefore you can take your time, your talent, your resources God has given you and specifically you, not me, not anybody else, specifically you to do something great for him. I believe that you are sitting there watching this video right now and saying, what do I do in 22? And you have not the right question to ask yourself. Because you said, God, I'm broke. God, I'm only tapped out at 100K income. God, I'm only tapped out at $50,000 income. God, I'm only tapped out at this level of my life and my business. God wants to immensely bless you in a very crazy way. So therefore, when you make it, and you're up there, not only taking care of people here, but God gets all the glory for all your goodness and your blessings and your success. How do you feel about that? I hope you feel great about that. Put in the comment section below. I am a faith-based millionaire. I am a faith-based millionaire. Speak it into life. Before I let you go, check out these couple of videos here. Number one is three biblical truths. Three biblical truths that will make you become a faith-based millionaire. And the second video here, which was one of my favorite conversations, and by the way, would you like to have a part two of this conversation? Because it was with Rabbi Lappin, how biblical wisdom will help you become a faith-based millionaire. That being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Put your thoughts, questions, comments in the comment section below. Who knows, we might just use it in a future episode. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, from Dallas, Texas, I'll see you tomorrow. Till we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.